Hello everybody, it is midday Thursday and it's time for another live Life Mastery show. So absolutely welcome to you, whether you're watching in live or whether you're watching the recording, which happens as uh, quite a number of people actually tune in and watch the recordings over the week, which is absolutely fantastic because it's wonderful to know so many people are tuning into this show. So, uh, so thank you for that. I say whether you're live or whether you're watching the recording, it is much appreciated because I love being on this show, love being on here every Thursday at midday with the Life Mastery Show. So a little bit about Adrian if you're new, if you haven't uh, seen me before. So I'm the author of Where Am I Right Now and the author of several other books and I work in that space of being a life mastery expert. I've been working as a counsellor, psychotherapist and coach for over 20 years and I put that under the umbrella now of life mastery because for me it's all about getting ourselves into that space and becoming independent and being focused and being empowered to be in tune of our own life, to be the master of our own destiny. And I love doing that. I love sharing that idea with people. So the show for me is all about you asking questions about how I may be able to support you in going forward with your life. So as I say, I, you know, I'm not doing the psychic work. I'm not tuning into past loved ones or those have passed over. Uh, to give those insights, I'm going to get you to empower yourself by asking clear questions, very precise questions on how you are right now in your life, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, in relationship with finance, um, with any other aspect of your life. And then I will try and support you by getting you a clear answer or insight into that too. So if you have anything you'd like to ask, please just type it in the uh, bar below in the comments. And then I can actually see those, read those, and then I can respond. Last week's show was fantastic. We had lots of uh, engagement there last week with people asking some great questions. And it'll be great to, that, to have that happening again this week. So um, just a little bit about what I want to bring in today is uh, a little bit of talk um, around spiritual development. So you can ask any question you like, but if you have something specific on spiritual development... That is what I'd like to bring to the table today to discuss it a little bit more in depth today. So any questions around spiritual development, how you may be able to do that, how I might be able to support you with some questions around that in terms of your guidance and what it actually means to be on a pathway of spirituality. And uh, if you look in the, uh, the top of, um, of this link, you'll see there's two links I've typed in there. One is my website, adrianhanks.com, and the other is a link to a Facebook event. We am actually doing a seven week program on spiritual development, the seven conditions of spiritual development. And that starts in uh, a couple of weeks on the 22nd of July. So you can uh, have a look at that and tune in. Got a few people coming on board for that already. And that's going to be a great journey over seven Monday nights um, starting very, very soon. So, uh, so look, if you have any questions around life mastery, um, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual or any other aspect, then please do type your question in there. If you just want to say hello to me as well, you can just type hello Adrian and uh, I'll respond when I see your name coming up because I know people do like to type in and say hello as well. So I'll leave that to you to do. So uh, a little bit about um, me a bit further. Um, so I've been working in that space of uh, spiritual, personal development for over 25 years now. I'm a psychotherapist and counsellor. So I work one on one with uh, with groups and um, and then also take people on journeys. We, we journey into the bush. We uh, I travel overseas. I like to go to Africa with groups of people. So uh, very eclectic. I like to do many, many, many different things. But in essence, everything I do is uh, bringing in that sense of life mastery, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual and all the other aspects. And if you want a bit of guidance around that, just a bit of uh, free guidance, if you do go to my website, adrianhanks.com, and go to the shop, you can download the free journal that has the 10 life aspects in that journal that you can actually work on every single day by writing in that journal. It's a really good resource to have to keep you in tune, to keep you in alignment in life. So, hi, Julie. Great to see you on here again. 
Um, it's always good to see a few locals, a few regulars coming on. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. So yeah, so if you go to our website, adrianhanks.com, go to the shop, you can download that for free. You can also get the purchase, the um, the post out edition if you want that, but it also is free for you. I like to give a few free things away too. So just a, a good resource for you because there's something I want to bring in uh, today. And I've had this a couple of times um, in the last couple of days. I was talking to somebody yesterday, uh, somebody I hadn't seen for a while, and we were talking about fitness. He said, hey, Adrian, he said, you're, you're looking pretty good. You've um, you know, got a bit of um, muscle tone about you. You've lost a bit of uh, body fat. I said, yeah, I've uh, actually lost 16 kilos of body fat in the last uh, few months. And now I'm putting on, on the muscle. I'm in the gym. I'm doing my fitness. I'm doing my running. I've just run a, a 23K charity run a, a few weeks ago. And he said, yeah, I should be doing something like that too. And that word should really triggered me, really prickled me, because I hear it often. I was talking to somebody else this morning. They weren't feeling very well. And I said, look, there's a few things you can do. And the same thing was, yeah, I should do that. So I'm just wondering whether we can get into that topic of the shoulds. You know, I should be, I could be, or we can change that language to I will. I will go and do a program. I will lose some weight. I will do my meditation rather than I should be meditating or I should be eating better or I should be watching my health. How about I will or even better, I am. So that's the uh, I from from should. Yeah, that's the first stage. You know, I should be doing it. That's a bit of consciousness, which is great because at least you're aware that you should be doing it. But then the next stage is, you know, I could be doing it. Yeah, you could be. So let's find a way to do that. And then I will do it which means you're going to set the time to start. And then the final statement is, I am. So I am doing it. I am meditating rather than I should be meditating or I will meditate. So I just want to get clear about some language that's really empowering for us. Because when I say I am currently running and I am currently walking and I am currently watching my food intake, it's very different than me saying I will do it because I haven't yet done it. So the engagement is really important. So I always talk about the vision, yep, and then the plan, which is, you know, I should be or I could be or I will, and then the actual action of doing it, and that is I am in the action of doing it. So vision, plan, action, VPA. So if you just imprint that in the hard drive, and I'll put that up there, V, vision, then the plan, and then of course the action is the bit that actually does the change. Because you can do all the planning you like. You can plan to write a book. You can vision writing the book. But until you actually pick up the pen or start to typing the words on the paper, then nothing is happening. It's still just a vision and a plan. And then, of course, once you've written the book, then it's the publishing and then the selling and getting it out there. So there's a few different stages to actually action yourself in. So I really want to get into the action side of things today. I really want to talk about the purpose today. But if you do have any questions, please do ask away, because that's what makes this show, is when you ask questions. So please do ask a question on where you are right now in your life, if you would like some guidance, some support, some insight into something. So just to be clear, um, if you're going to type up something like, um, you know, will I heal from my surgery or will I meet my partner? That's not what this show really is about today. This is about empowering you to ask a clear question rather than getting guidance from the other side. So, hey, Nikki, thank you. Let's have a read. Hello, I'm on a good path, but get stuck or pulled back trying to keep my vibes positive where my empath side is picking up with this negatively. Okay, so I want to talk a bit about empath because this question comes up a lot, Nikki, on people who have that um, label for themselves of being an empath. You know, I'm an empath too. I'm very empathetic. I work with people in that coaching space, in the psychotherapeutic place of being a counsellor. And of course, I have to have empathy in that space, you know, to be a, to be a good counselor, to be a good psychotherapist, one needs empathy. But the clear thing is when you get into that empath space is to have a really clear boundary, a really clear, healthy boundary so that you may pick up people's negativity, but you do not take it on board and you actually do not engage. And one of the big things that... Um, I put forward and I learn that if I'm teaching people in terms of becoming a spiritual teacher or a health practitioner where they're working in the space, 
in with empath with being an empath or being a psychic or whatever it is i'm big on boundaries and i teach people the art of having a healthy boundary i've got a really strong healthy boundary and uh, and it means I, I just don't get sick physically or psychically I just do not take it on because I have a really clear boundary for me. I have a very strong constitution because I have a very healthy boundary. And when people feel negativity, and we do feel and see and um, experience people's negativity, but it's about not taking on board. And you only take it on board if you get permission from that person. So the first thing is, have I got permission to work with that person? Because if you just, um, I was just uh, had that experience a few days ago, I went to visit somebody and they dropped straight in to trying to give me a message from the other side without asking my permission. And she said, um, the lady in um, question said, OK, Adrian, I'm being asked for you to give me a word. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm not engaging. And the reason I didn't is because she did not ask my permission if I wanted a reading. There was an assumption there that her guides would give me a reading because she was told I needed a reading. For me, my boundary is I wasn't prepared. I wasn't ready. I actually wasn't in the space to get a reading. And she didn't ask my permission. So I stopped it. I didn't buy into her game. I didn't buy into her, her space because she didn't ask my permission. Rule number one with all spiritual work for me is ask permission. So obviously, if they're not present to ask permission, then you ask soul permission. And there's a specific way to ask for soul permission to get work with somebody from their soul rather than the physical yes or the physical no. And, um, and that, that's another field. But in terms of your question, Nikki, you know, that picking up the negative energy, don't engage. You can actually stop yourself from engaging. And I share this little story and I've shared it often for those who've heard about the three little pigs. You now the wolf is trying to get in and it gets in the first house because it's only made of straw. And it gets in the second house because it's only made of sticks. But when the three pigs come together in the solid brick house, you know, with that solid boundary, and you have the physical, the emotional, and the spiritual, which is what the three pigs represent, then the wolf cannot get in. And if there's a gap like there was in the chimney, he comes down, they simply burn him up with their energy. So Three Little Pigs is a great esoteric story that was told to children on the subconscious level to teach them about healthy spiritual boundaries. So I hope that really helps you not to take on other people's negativity. That's the choice. You have the power of choice. You have the power of boundary not to let other people's negativity in. And I have a saying and I want to share it with you. If it's not invited, it's not allowed in physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, psychically. So if I go to a, um, a reading or if I go to a, a public event and I want to observe um, somebody giving readings to people, but I don't want to engage. I have a very clear boundary about not being the one in the room to be picked for a, um, a, a spiritual message coming through because sometimes I just don't feel like it. So I put up the boundary and when I do that, I never get asked because I'm clear about my boundary. I think the other psychic, obviously, you know, great psychics will see that. They'll acknowledge that. Uh, there will be respect in that and they won't go past that boundary. But you have to really learn, um, Nikki, really healthy boundaries, particularly around psychic work, because there's a lot of people in this in the psychic space who are not healthy. They're really not. You know, let's let's be real about this. I want to, you know, let's let's say it as it is. There's a lot of people in the spiritual space and they're not healthy. And a lot of that, from my perspective, because I've spoken to them, I've worked with them, I've experienced being around people for you know, 20, 30 years now and the unhealthiness in the psychic space is quite phenomenal and a lot of it is because a healthy boundary isn't there they take on other people's negativity um, of course and then uh, that's not healthy space you know don't know about you but i've got enough of my own stuff where i don't need to take on other people's stuff so um yeah so um yeah just don't take it on please but and learn some boundaries nikki and very happy to help you in that space and when i do the um i just mentioned earlier and, and i think it's typed up on the top here I'm running a seven week program, seven conditions of um, uh, spiritual development. And a lot of that is about developing oneself to work in the spiritual space, particularly if you're going to work as a healer or as a psychic or as an empath or a medium in that space. Really, really good to be in a healthy space physically, emotionally, mentally and spiritually, because if you're not, burnout comes pretty quick. As I said there's a lot of unhealthy people 
in the new age um, in the new age space and I use new age with respect because I think that's where we're in a new age of development we're in a new space um, to support each other with psychic development and with uh, health and well-being but number one is self you know I, I won't work with anybody with all due respect unless for me they're in a really good healthy space physically emotionally mentally spiritually because what are they showing me as a teacher as a guide if they're not prepared to do it for themselves how can i trust they can do it well for me so that's my own litmus test that's my personal test i look at somebody i meet somebody i engage with them and then i say well i ascertain is that person really looking after themselves physically emotionally mentally spiritually is it somebody i would um i would like to um, engage because i really feel that they're actually walking their talk and if they're not then i won't engage with them you know, there's many people I do engage with, but there's some I simply don't because from my perspective, they're not walking the talk in terms of the physical, the emotional, mental, the spiritual engagement for themselves. Because it starts with self. If we can't love ourselves, it's very hard to love somebody else. If we can't give advice to ourselves, how, how can we truly then give advice to others? Uh, I know it's not 100%. I'm not 100%. And I've got my foibles and I've got my challenges. Um, but I do engage daily with my physical, emotional, mental and spiritual health every single day and I'm conscious of it don't always get it right but I'm conscious of actually working on it so a bit of a, a long-winded uh, reply but I hope that really gave you something to grasp Nikki because it's really important because the last thing I want to see happen to you or anybody else is that burnout stage by not having that healthy boundary or really not looking after yourself okay so any more questions out there and if you want to continue the conversation Nikki with a, a follow-up question or to go down the rabbit hole a little bit deeper with that, then please do type away. I do like the engagement of conversation on here too. And I can see Nathan's watching here too. Hi, Nathan. It's uh, good to see the uh, the names coming up on the screen here. So it's, uh, I say some people watch live, which is absolutely fantastic, and other people actually watch the recording, or they just jump in and watch the little pieces and they take snippets out of what I'm sharing. So, So today I'm on the Gold Coast. I uh, do do my show from different places depending where I am on a Thursday. And uh, sometimes, uh, I know next week for instance, I will actually be down in Byron Bay uh, because I'm giving a presentation there on Wednesday night and I've got things on, on Thursday morning. So next week I will be sitting somewhere in Byron Bay giving this live from Byron. So I do like to be in a different place but I do make the commitment to be somewhere at midday every Thursday. So, uh, so just any more questions in there for anybody in terms of the life mastery? And uh, we just had the great question there from Nikki around uh, being an empath and then getting those boundaries in place. So one question I do have for you is when you do that self-evaluation for yourself in terms of the physical, the emotional, the mental and the spiritual, what's the next level for you? What are you going to do in your life and you know, starting from now, it's not like I'm gonna, it's I'm, I am, I am doing. What things can you actually engage with to better your health? Physical health, emotional health, mental health and spiritual health. Because it's always good to challenge oneself to grow. Because I believe as human beings, it is about growing, it is about developing. It is about bringing oneself into more enlightenment. And that's just a daily task for me. It's a, a daily thing to engage in. Spirituality is not something we engage in on the weekend or once a week for, my, for, for myself. It's a daily practice. And uh, how I engage and engage myself in terms of my spiritual development is how I treat the next person I meet. So how I treat or experience or not judge the next person I meet. Because that gives me a sense of my development of where I am in the moment each day. So when I meet somebody, you know, try not to jumping into uh, projection, reaction or judgment and trying to meet the soul of that person. And that's a challenge sometimes because some people, you know, they do push my buttons. So my, my own spiritual practice, how do I respond to each person I meet every day? Because that's a good measure for me to get a sense of where I am on my spiritual path. So my spiritual path is measured by the next person I meet. So I don't know what your measure is. But maybe it's good to get a measure so you can measure your own spiritual growth, your own spiritual journey. And the other question I ask people is, 
can you name your spiritual path? Can you be really clear on your spiritual journey? You know, what is it you're actually on? What journey? Can you name that journey for yourself without being too generic? Can you name the lineage? Can you name the teachers? Can you name the meditations involved? Can you name the and read some of the text? Can you write a thesis on your path? Can you write an, um, a couple of pages on what your spiritual path actually is? So you define it. Because a big part of spiritual development is clarity. And that's why I say, you know, if you're going to ask a question, get really clear on the question. Because clarity is such a great spiritual tool to have in one's life. Great personal development and spiritual tool. So clarity is a big one. So getting clear on one's path. You know, I've, I've been following my own spiritual journey now in a particular path of anthroposophy or the Rosicrucian path for over 25 years. And I'm really clear that that's my pathway. Yes, I... I do go and have a little bit of a look about others in terms of comparison and a newness and getting a sense of is there anything else coming through from other other forms um, but I'm so connected and committed and um, and happy with the path I'm on that I stay with it I've all said I'll, I'll be on this path of anthroposophy and Rosicrucianism until I feel something better comes along for me uh, that's going to give me something a bit deeper and I haven't found that yet so I'm, I'm stick with what I know and of course, after a few years, one then deepens the journey. It's like going to primary school and then high school and then college and then university and then going to get the PhD. And spirit, the spiritual development path is a bit like that too. We start in little school and then we get bigger and bigger and we learn more and more and more. The further we stay in a particular system or on a particular path rather than hopping around from one place to another. It's a bit like languages. If you if you have a six months in French, you learn so much. Then if you do six months in Italian, you learn so much. And if you do six months in Russian, you learn so much. And six months in Mandarin, you learn so much. But if you took all those six months and had 24 months, two years in one of those languages, you then probably master one of those languages. So then you become a master in something rather than somebody who knows lots of little things. Which sometimes is good, it's good to have a few languages, but if you want to master something, that takes time. Often takes years to master something. And if you want to be on a spiritual journey and master the journey, then it is a case of committing to a long-term journey. I've committed now, you know, over 25 years on this one journey. It's a bit like um, one of my favourite books, uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Before he wrote the book, he committed himself to 25 years of studying the very people he was writing about. 25 years of study before he actually started writing in the book. Obviously he was taking notes, but the book to be published was 25 years after he started his research. That's commitment. So the spiritual journey is about commitment as well. So, so like any, any other questions in there? I, I can certainly talk um, for an hour and I can talk all day and, and share, but I, I'd love to get the engagement going. So if there's any questions in there, about your spiritual journeying. Any questions, any thoughts, uh, please type them up, just like Nikki did earlier on with a great question. And then I can certainly jump in and answer some of that as well for you. Let's see if we can get some finger energy going, get some questions happening. And remember, I'm not doing the psychic stuff today. I'm not uh, tuning into the people past. This is about you asking questions and then me giving you some processes to empower yourself to bring it into your life the life life mastery empowerment very very powerful thing to get into i've been sticking to myself since awakening but wanted to surround myself with more awakened people and realize even if they are family i need to be care of what i give of myself to others absolutely um nikki getting back to the boundary the boundary works on two aspects. One is uh, what not to let in, but also what not to let out. How can you contain yourself so you're not giving your energy away to anybody? You're not giving um, yourself to others. Um, the, the danger of um, that is if we don't have that healthy boundary where we feel uh, competent around having that boundary is we can become recluse. We can keep to ourselves. And there's a lot of people in the spiritual development world who spend a lot of time by themselves because there is that fear of people taking something from them and energy from them. So that boundary is clear, you know, not about taking something in, but also about not giving away to people. 
So the same thing applies. Learn the boundary where if you get a sense somebody's trying to take something from you, then you just don't give it. Um, and I'll give you an example. When one comes across a bully, a bully is taking something from you. Yeah, they f bullies feed off other people. Yeah, they're, they're, it's, vamp it's vampirical. So bullies are basically you know, vampires where they try to take something from you by being a bully and trying to get something from you. But if you don't do bullies, yeah, they can't take from you. And it's about learning not to put up with bullies. It's not about learning, uh, it's learning not to be coerced into something. You know, there's a lot of people out there in the, uh, sadly, and I, I say this with all sincerity, it's very sad where I, I go to a function, I go to a, a spiritual development or I go to a personal development workshop or a, a presentation and then there's some um, undermining ways to get people to sign up afterwards. Some people do it really consciously, sadly, and some people do it unconsciously, but they still use techniques to disarm people to make them sign up for their programs. And guess what? Adrian doesn't sign up. And you can see them scratching their head going, I've tried every trick in the trade. Like I know this, I've practiced this. I know how to get somebody to sign up on that piece of paper to get their, you know, 200 bucks or their 15,000 or $20,000. And um, I just don't go there. I just don't go to that space because I don't engage in people's coercive behavior or their bullying behavior. I've learned not to go there. I've trained myself in my spiritual personal development. So Nikki, I'll be saying to you, you know, train yourself in that space so that you feel really confident in the company of others where you're in your eye presence. Because it's really in your eye presence, in your sense of self, where people then cannot take from you. And people do it all the time. I, I see it quite sadly. I still see it in relationships that happens, in uh, business it happens in the new age space it happens it happens everywhere so one has to be aware of it so the first thing is uh, you know mental awareness and psychic awareness not to let that engagement going in there and then actually be able to say no clearly without getting angry without getting defensive but no really clearly hey donna nice to see you on here too yeah it's emotional blackmail and it's how people sadly make a living um and there's a few uh, people doing that, some, you know, and there's some big names doing it too. I watch people, I study people, and I don't go to some particular events because I, I get saddened by what I see when I see hundreds of people running up and signing up when they're not in their eye presence. When they're not in their eye presence. And a lot of people then go home and go, well, what have I done? Because they've been almost hypnotized into that space. They've been coerced into that space. But when people train themselves to be conscious... It's a bit like going shopping in the supermarket. You know, you walk into a supermarket with a, a little list and walk out with 20 things you don't need because of the advertising. You know, you may have been watching TV for a few days and subliminal messages coming out there, you know, come and buy this, come and buy this, come and buy this. And you walk out of the supermarket, but well, personally, I don't. I got, occasionally I do, you know, because I'm human too. Uh, but some people get caught up in that space all the time. They walk out with things they don't really need because they've been subconsciously programmed to get those things you know television is is the king of it it's it's what people do you know sit and get hypnotized by tv and then go and spend their money from the advertising campaigns tv is just one big advertising box and people subconsciously get caught up into it particularly if they're not healthy if they're not looking at themselves physically emotionally mentally spiritually so um so yeah so i'd be saying to you um Nikki, go out and um, you know practice some eye presence work. Practice getting into smaller groups and then into your family and friends and just being in your eye presence and observing and watching. Yeah, observing and watching. Uh, <laughs> yeah, online shopping is really good, isn't it? You don't have to spend as much and uh, you don't get caught up in the whole supermarket uh, space as well. It's uh, it's an interesting uh, interesting phenomenon where people do the. Uh, the big advertising shop so so anybody else got any questions and yeah thank you nikki for that and uh, i'd say you know do some development work around yourself uh to do that. if you want to come and uh, jump on my seven week development program you're very welcome to do so the uh, facebook event page is up there also if you go to adrianhanks.com and you go to the um 
the programs the program is in there you can have a little bit of read and sign up and get on that it's always good to do personal spiritual development um, with somebody i'm not suggesting it doesn't always have to be adrian but if it's not me find somebody to do that with um, continually i've got my teachers i work with people all the time it never stops i've got you know real life teachers and i've also got uh, the past over teachers uh, in terms of my teacher rudolf steiner who's my main teacher of the last 25 years i read his text i do the meditations um, i'm part of a a um a uh, if you like a, a private uh, group where we we do study study group so lots of things so that pathway is quite clear from the guidance of others and i think it's good to have guidance yes makes perfect sense feeling confidence staying on my eye presence yep so yeah really get get into that eye presence and and don't do that coercive bullying stuff don't let people suck you dry physically psychically mentally spiritually because it's uh it, it does make people sick you know particularly if people get that all the time where they are coerced into something or, or lose themselves um it's very, 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 very sad to see. I like to see people in their eye presence. That's why I love this show. I love the life mastery essence of this show because this is all about people empowering themselves to make their own decisions and to be really conscious of their eye presence so that when they make a decision, it's coming from that eye presence perspective. So, hey, thank you, Donna. <laughs> Much appreciated. Uh, thank you. I do love teaching. Um, uh, I, I did... Um, some work. Um, I went to see uh, Dr. John uh, John D. Martini many, many, many years ago, and uh, got his book. And one of the great things I learned from uh, uh, John's book was to get really clear on your your passion and name those passions of what you actually want to engage with every single day. And mine is teaching, traveling. Yeah, I love to teach. I love to travel, and I love to write. And just um, a few weeks ago, I was on one of Arlene's webinars. She does great webinars, my wife. And we were doing some personal development work on there. And something didn't feel quite full in terms of my uh, labeling of my passions that I'd like to engage with every day. Teaching, writing, traveling. And I do all those three really well. I travel a lot. I write a lot. I teach a lot. And the one that would come up was lead, to be a leader. And there was a part of me that wasn't quite ready to really make that statement that I was a leader. So I've added a fourth now to that um, that list of things to engage with every day. So I've put my hand up a bit more to become the leader, um, not just a community leader, but a global leader. So I'm stepping into some spaces now where I'm becoming a global speaker and a global teacher um, and traveling a lot more with that and putting myself out there to travel and be that leader and teacher uh, and writer, of course, in, in that travel space. So it's good to name it. It's good to get really clear on what it is you're doing every day to get that sense of eye presence it's uh it's a really really good one to do so i hope that helps you and uh yeah so yeah just that teaching space i do love to teach and i love to help teach others to empower themselves very very important thing to do so um and of course you know donna and i go back a, a fair way we've done a a bit of work together we've connected up uh, over the years uh, and it's it's just wonderful that uh, to see Donna now on the on the show as well. She's a a, a colleague now in in this space and doing her work and really stepping out there. So uh, yeah, well done to you uh, too, Donna. It's uh, it's good to put ourselves out there as leaders, as teachers, as as guides. And of course, you know we're always students too. And how can we learn always as student teachers to take ourselves to the next level in terms of our teaching and our guidance as well? So that the learning never stops for me either. I'm, I'm constantly learning, constantly studying, and. Coming back to that question is, um, you know, the repetition of learning. You know, I, I pick up this book and I've been studying this now for over 10 years. Repetitious learning, repetitious learning, the same meditation, repetitious learning, the same text, repetitious learning, because there's always more to something we read or see or experience. There's always another level when we're on that pathway. So, yes, bring in newness. But do the repetition work as well. You know, keep doing the repetition of yoga or meditation and the mind changes and the body changes. So the repetition is good in, in, in many, many areas, particularly in personal and spiritual development work. So if you're doing something, you're doing it well, just keep doing it. You don't have to keep changing it. I have, I've had the same meditation for 20 years. 
same text, same, same words, same meditation, and the depth that that meditation has taken me to, because I'm repeating, repeating, and dropping down the rabbit hole with that text, the sacred text, each and every meditation is quite profound. But if I keep chopping and changing, I don't get the depth. So repetition is good. So, so any other questions? Let's uh, see if we get a... Hey, uh, Nikki again. I'm amazed at how my path, the learning is helping me heal. Okay, fibromyalgia. Yeah, look, healing is really possible on all levels, isn't it? Absolutely. Because the mind is the most powerful healer. Yes, we have to heal the body. But when we tell ourselves that the body will heal through the mind, it's the first step. There's a, a, a beautiful book, and it's called um, Cry of the Damaged Man. And it's an incredible, incredible story of a man who uh, is a surgeon, um, and he was in a car accident. And uh, when the paramedics come, he was still conscious, and he told them exactly what was wrong, where in the body. Um, he got into hospital, and uh, they basically said to him, you know, you're not going to walk, you, you, you're finished. Um, and it's this whole story of recovery. By telling himself in the mind, I will walk again. I know what's going on. And he did. He, he walked out of the hospital. There's a few stories like that. He had Cry of the Damaged Man. It's a very, very powerful, short short little novel. You'll read it in a, a few hours. But very, very powerful of the power of the mind in healing. I work with a lot of people in that space. There's a lot of people in the cancer space right now. I, I did work in a cancer retreat center for uh, three and a half years. I saw lots of people um, dealing with uh, cancer in their lives and changing that around through health and well-being, through meditation, through diet. Um, work with Ian Gawler, a very well-known meditation teacher, and of course set up the Gawler Foundation in Victoria. Um, and then for people around me are dealing with, with cancer in their lives and seeing tumours shrink, seeing tumours disappear through mindset, through health, through well-being. So very, very, very powerful is, is the mind in doing that. So for me, the spiritual component of healing is... it's, it's it, without it, I, I, the healing doesn't fully happen. Yes, we, we heal physically if we go and get surgery or something, but without that spiritual component, for me, it doesn't complete the process of healing. So um, so Donna, absolutely, and I'm so weird when you hear the same thing and yet through growth and hear a different message. Absolutely, isn't it? There's different, same, same message, different voices, comes in different ways, but when we keep hearing that same message through and through and then take that message on board and then work with it and challenge yourself to grow from those messages, it's very profound. And I've got four or five key books that I keep reading in my life. And uh, same message, same message, but I hear it and experience it on a different level each and every time I read that. A bit like a good movie. You know, I watch a movie two or three times and see different things in there. I just watched The World's Greatest Showman uh, again, uh, I think for the fourth time just the other night, and just went, wow. Is this the same movie? I couldn't even remember the beginning that I'd actually seen those first five minutes because it seemed different. Because I'm seeing it again, repetition, repetition. Because I love that movie in terms of a um, um, a sense of achievement. Everything can be falling apart and how do we stand up again? How do we step up again when things seemingly are finished? I love watching that movie. It's very inspirational for me. But I say, you know, I saw it in the first five minutes. Like, oh, is it, have I missed a piece or is this different? Because it's not quite how I remember it. Not that's the fourth time I've watched it. I've watched some movie. I've watched the movie Thinking Grow Rich because it's now a, a movie as well. Um, and you can download the movie, and I've done that. And I watch that really regularly. And I'm still picking up things in there. That I went, wow. I can't remember seeing that or hearing that. So yeah, repetition of learning, really, really fantastic. So, so any other questions in there? Let's see if there's any questions for anybody in terms of life mastery. Unless everybody's 100% perfect in their physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, and there's nothing to ask, there's nothing to uh, to grow with, um, which I'd be really surprised at. Because most of us have something to learn or something to grow into, myself included. But I do say to people, can we challenge ourselves to get into the 80-20 principle or the 90-10 principle? Or really pushing for that... 95 five principle in our lives physically emotionally mentally spiritually i'm not saying i should or even you know getting past i will but getting to the stage earning i am doing it 
I am doing the meditations, I am doing the health food, I am drinking water, I am taking alcohol out of, out of my life if it's not um, if it's not good for me. I am exercising, I am doing yoga. I am doing sport, I am engaging. That I am statement is so powerful, rather than I should be or I will be. So if you're not in an I am stage right now in something, maybe type a, a question in for me, because I love the engagement. And just while I'm uh, looking, you might see over my right shoulder, this is the uh, my vision board. I love vision boarding. I do vision boarding in a very different way um, than most people do. And I've got a particular process I've used that I've developed over uh, a number of years. So it's not just a case of sticking pictures on the board. They're actually placed in a particular place on the board uh, with particular phrases and particular words to get that engagement going of whatever's on the board. I also use my... Uh, my pendulum to ascertain where those pictures or words go and for what reason. And then I challenge myself to look at the emotion behind why I've put it there or why I haven't put a particular thing there. So it's a very powerful process. So that's uh, almost complete, a little bit more to do on that, um, that vision board. And we're doing that in the mastermind group that I'm currently running. So a very, very uh, powerful process is doing vision boarding. Okay, what would you recommend to move past or release a limit on income generation, even all the internal work of a client who is really stuck and done a lot of work until the engine generational and still isn't making the income. Okay, um, oftentimes um, it's about matching whatever the vibration is. And I'll, I'll give a little story, uh, Donna, and I gave this um, a couple of weeks ago, but I'll repeat it because it's a great story. I was working several years ago with somebody in Brisbane who was a kinesiologist. She just started and um, she put herself out there as a, for, to be a kinesiologist, $95 an hour or a session. She put it out there and she didn't get any clicks. Nothing was happening. And then we, uh, I asked her, I said, look, you're a kinesiologist. Have you tested yourself to see what the vibration is of what you should be charging? Oh, no, she said, I haven't. I said, well, that's strange because you're a kinesiologist. How about you use some of your own tools? So she did, we did, we did some work. And what came up when we did the uh, kinesiology muscle testing was $75 was her current vibrational rate for what she could charge where she would feel comfortable. And she did that. And in the first week, she had about five clients because it clicked, because vibrationally, she was ready for it. So if you're vibrationally ready for what you charge or what you want to come in, yeah, then it may flow a little bit more. So if you have a, a millionaire mindset, and you're really clear on that, the, the million will arrive. That's you know when you do the work. If you have that, I'm a $30,000 a year person, and you're trying to break beyond that, while that subconscious patterning is still there, it's still going to set that. So one has to do the work around what's the mindset, getting really clear on the release, that limitation of the generation of the, the income. And I know that for myself, I came from a very working class background in the UK, uh, you know, a single parent, not much money. Um, my grandfather actually used to work uh, with lords and ladies looking after their horses. So there was always that um, class thing going on. And I was very much into the whole working class socialist socialism space. And I've had to really break away from that. And currently what I'm doing is um, I'm doing some financial education to train myself to be free of my limiting beliefs. So I'm part of a, a Skyway Invest Group SWIG. Um, I joined 12 months ago and um, I have now my own portfolio. I have some IPO shares ready for the stock market. I read the uh, financial indexes. I'm um, studying Warren Buffett. I'm looking at different portfolios and how things work. I'm looking at different markets. Um, I even went out and um, let me just go in my top drawer. I went and I bought some... Um, Some currency, uh, a bit of um, currency trading, because I know from a friend that it's going to change a little bit. So I'm really in involving myself, engaging myself in the financial world to break free any limitations. So that hopefully that might help to answer your question a bit. If do the education around connecting to finance, look at where the blockages are, and that can be you know muscle tests or from some psychotherapeutic process, and then look at where the blockages are, name them, work with them. And then engage in 
a way to break free of those old stories. Because oftentimes it's just an old story. Like I have my old story. You know, wealth isn't good, rich people are this or that, whatever my story was. So it's really good to get clear about the blockages around that. So, so I hope that helps, Donna. Happy to have a conversation with you and, and all your client on that as well. Uh, yeah, connecting to finance, absolutely. You know, Making sure that everything is being ticked and connected with and, and looking at money in a different light, engaging with it, feeling it. Um, so I'm really engaged with, uh, with Skyway Invest Group, the uh, SWIG that I'm with now. I've been there for 12 months travel overseas with it. I'm going back overseas um, again in uh, a few weeks. I've, I've just been done some leadership training in the finance on that. And I'm really embracing myself in it and really getting clear on what my old blockages and stories were and clearing that up. It's, it's really empowering. I'm feeling really empowered around that finance space. Um, and I hope your client can find that space too. Uh, so Nikki, is the book you mentioned called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill? It certainly is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. In my opinion, one of the best books on the planet for mindset. And it's not just about money. People say, oh, it's just about making money. No, it's not. Because if you put the processes in place that are recommended in this book and you actually go through and look and do the self-evaluation, it's one of the, the greatest self-evaluation self processes I've come across. It's absolutely brilliant in terms of connection. Self-analysis test. It's absolutely brilliant. It's right at the back of the book. Um, and it really gives one a good sense of where, where one is at in terms of the mindset and connection to wealth. Because wealth isn't just about um, money. Wealth can be knowledge. And some people really have a lot of knowledge and a lot of um, um, insights. But there's a blockage about sharing it to the world. And that's sad. Or a blockage about study. I had some, I think somebody on here last week. Um, they had a blockage to study. Well, what's the blockage? Name it. Work on it. Because if you want to get somewhere, one has to study something. So um, so look at the blockages for yourself. Absolutely old story and that work has been done. Okay, so I'd suggest if it's been done and it's not flowing, then there's another level of the old story that hasn't been engaged with yet. You know, it's in, down the rabbit hole a bit deeper. Something obviously is still stuck there where that flow is not happening. And I'd suggest, you know, even... Um, if you work in the process of doing the, um, the vision board in not just sticking pictures on the board, but the deeper side of the process and getting clear on what's not able to be stuck on there of the blockage. So there's a few ways to block through that next level of the old story because it's, it, you know, oftentimes many, many, many levels in that. And sometimes I say to people, we can do the energy work around it and we can do the mindset around it. And what I do then say to people, Sometimes it needs to go into that psychotherapeutic place. I know sometimes I do my healing work and mentoring work. And then there's another level to, is to do the psychotherapeutic work from the psychotherapeutic perspective. Because the skills of psychotherapy are a bit different than mentoring and, and, um, and healing work. Because there's a particular skills that are learned skills from a psychotherapist that can take people down that journey because of the training. And there's another sort of level to that work. So coaching work is one thing. And all due respect, I'm a coach too. And I know lots of people are coaching. But coaching is limited to the coaching um, knowledge. And then psychotherapeutic work in terms of psychotherapy is a learned skill. You know, it's, you know I, I trained five years to be a psychotherapist. So I have some psychotherapy skills where I can go down that rabbit hole a little bit deeper because I'm trained in that. It's a bit like I can go to the doctor and get a Band-Aid to fix a graze, but if you want to get um, stitched, it's a different skill. And then if you need to go and get surgery, it's another skill. A doctor doesn't do surgery. You go to the surgeon. So it's a bit like mindset. There's certain levels of going into the mind, and we can do it through mentoring, through coaching. But then oftentimes there's another level in terms of the psychotherapy. And so sometimes that is needed if there's a deep blockage, particularly if there's a trauma, because Working with people with trauma is a particular skill. And, you know, I don't advocate anybody who is a coach or a mentor to get into trauma work with people because if you re-trigger trauma, it can actually re-traumatize and that's worse. It's a particular skill to work with trauma. And oftentimes around money and different blockages, there's a, could be a trauma involved around it. So just be cautious of working in that space. So, yep. 
Yep, so I'm very happy to help Donna. You know, if, if you've done that work and you want some support in that, very, very happy to help you in that space too from that psychotherapeutic place because it could possibly be that that's what it is. I'm not saying it is, um, but oftentimes it is that space. I, I get to a point in my coaching and in my uh, mastermind work when I'm working with the people, people in there where they book in and we don't just have a mentoring session or a coaching session. We have a psychotherapeutic session, a counselling session where we go into that trauma, we go into the blockage in a, in a deeper way. And I say that is a skill set. Don't just take people down there um, if there's no skill base of people because it's a bit can be dangerous because um, it can flip people back into the trauma. And when people are stuck in trauma, it's not a nice place. So it's, <laughs> I hope that helps out in that space. So um, so any more thoughts, any more questions in that space? Really good to have the conversation here. Every week is different. And I totally trust that space that uh, whoever's on here for each week, there's a particular topic that gets brought that is the right topic for the other people who are not asking, but are listening. Even the people who are not live and they're listening to recordings, the messages people bring forth. It's almost like the people on here are the conduits who are asking and experiencing for others too. So I trust that because I know um, when groups come together and particular people ask questions or have insights, the others gain from that too. So for those who have been engaging today, thank you because you're doing it on your behalf, but you're also doing it on the behalf of others who are listening and watching as well. Particularly people who maybe don't want to be public and put things up, they'll be going, aha, thank you. That's answering my question too. Yes, always. And it happens time and time and time again. Uh, my mastermind partner, um, Barry, many of you know, I've, uh, I'm, I have a mastermind partner. We've been masterminding for eight years now. Talk about commitment and repetition. We've uh, been doing that every Monday morning. And uh, he's in America at the moment on a six-week tour doing uh, some filming for his new documentary, and uh, which came about, of course, partly through a masterminding as well because it gave him the, uh, the inspiration and the, uh, the courage and the support to do that. Uh, but he's out there now. And last week he went to see um, Esther Hicks. I'm sure Jerry was there too. Jerry has passed over, but I'm sure his presence is there. And Esther was there. And as you know, if you know Esther, um, Esther Hicks's work, she tunes into the person who has the highest frequency question for the group. Now, Barry told me he had seven questions written down, ready to ask one of them if he was one of the ones that got picked to go and sit in the hot seat to ask the question. And he didn't get picked. But the incredible thing is, he spent four hours with, uh, with Esther and, and a small group of people in that, uh, group, in that room. Every one of those seven questions got answered. Now, that's pretty amazing. All seven. I saw her live 10 years ago on the Gold Coast. Lucky enough to spend two days uh, with Esther and Jerry. Jerry was there at the Pines Resort. We went and spent uh, two full days with uh, Esther and Jerry. It was incredible. I've actually uh, got, I think they're right in front of me here. If I lean forward, because I've been listening to them, I've actually got the recordings on tape of those two full days. I've got five discs of uh, Esther and Jerry on the Gold Coast. In, um, that was on 12th of the 11th, 09. Yes, yeah, so it'll be 10 years ago in November um, that we saw them live in, um, on the Gold Coast. Absolutely amazing. And yeah, likewise, some of the questions I had um, in me um, got answered from that so uh, so on this program i know that people are getting their questions answered in a uh, direct way or in a uh, in a way that's not direct but they're still getting this message so thank you for that so any last minute questions right you can ask me a question about esther and jerry if you want to don't mind what the questions are but just to keep the conversation going today let's see if there's a question uh, on here i do like to finish you know we do the hour show we do uh, midday to one o'clock australian eastern standard time so we've got about five minutes left of the show so great to have the uh, the connection here with donna as well yeah in my opinion um, esther is uh, one of the uh, the greatest uh, mediums out there channels out there i think she's a uh, pretty amazing what she brings through and how she brings it through in such clarity and uh, something she shared with um, with Barry and the group which she's actually getting quite a few new messages coming through now on a different vibration so things are changing for her now of course as she's developing as well because she's been in this uh, 
in this for a very long time. And as she develops and as she opens up even more to the, the messages coming through and the channeling and the connection she has, of course, the vibration is going to change to a higher level. So that's uh, really, really exciting that uh, she's expanding her work as well. I can't wait to uh, read the next book uh, that gets brought through from her as well. So. So any other further questions in here? Lots of little love hearts being popped up on the screen. I do love them. My wife is great at that sometimes. I'll be sitting there on a webinar or doing something and pop, 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 pop. I get all these hundreds of uh, little love hearts popping up. And I think, oh, I wonder if that is wifey. And yes, it's wifey. So I'm not suggesting this is, but it certainly could be. Uh, Lisa Barlow, will I get back to Australia to live? Um, I say I'm not doing the psychic work here, um, Lisa, but I say to you, if you want to be in Australia and you make the decision to be in Australia, then yes, you'll probably be back in Australia because it's up to you. It's absolutely up to you. Will I get back to Australia? Where are you right now? Where do you want to be? What's your vision? Do you want to be in Australia? If you do, then make a concerted effort to be here. So it's a question of, you know, will you be back in Australia? Yeah, if you plan to be here, you'll be back here. That's not, for me, that's not a question to ask psychically. Because that's your choice. That's your choice to be back in Australia, whether you want to be here. And if you do, make the effort, make it happen for yourself. If you don't, then make the decision. This is what I mean about being conscious and clear in your being. When you're in your eye presence and you ask that question from your eye presence, you will not have to ask me. You can ask that question for yourself. Do I want to be in Australia? And if so, when do I want to be in Australia? And what will I do in Australia? Where will I live in Australia? Have your vision board. Get clear. Write down your vision. Because that's really empowering. Lisa, if you get into that space of empowerment, it's an amazing place to be. So first question for you would be, do you want to be in Australia? And then when do you want to be in Australia? And then how are you going to make it happen? So visualize it, plan it, and then put things into action. All those things you need to be back here. Thank you. I had to go to New Zealand after brain surgery. No money. Okay. Uh, brain surgery. I hope you're healing really, really well. Um, in fact, my my master, my partner uh, Barry had a brain tumor. He doesn't mind me sharing this. It's a bit public, and he healed his brain tumor. Uh, he was actually given just a few weeks to live, and he broke through that, and um, and had to make some powerful decisions, obviously around that. So I'd say okay, brain tumor. The other thing, uh, sorry, yeah, brain surgery, and then the other, no money. So the thing about money, and we've spoken about this just now when Donna was asking the question about finance. Having no money is a choice. I know I'm being a bit direct, but having no money is a choice. How can you now get money? Because there's a million ways to get it when we think outside the box. What will it take to get back to Australia? And I'll give an example. And it actually was from a, a client I was working with a few years ago. Um, she was actually a New Zealander. She was in Australia and she wanted to go to do some training, some energy training. And uh, she had no money. She had five dollars. She she paid me for some sessions. She paid for a few. And we met up in a cafe in, um, in here in Australia. She said, I want to go and do this training. And it's X amount of dollars. It's going to cost me about three thousand dollars with the flights, the training. We've got to stay in a really nice hotel. It was in it. It was in Italy. The first training actually was in a few days time in Paris. And I said, well, let's just not do the rush five days, but we've got three weeks to get three grand together to get you to Italy to do the training. So we came up with a plan. She executed the plan. She was on the plane flying to Italy in tears saying, how did this happen? How did I get on the plane to go to Italy to do this training that I've wanted to do? In two and a half weeks, she raised the money. She found a way. She got into the tuned into it. We thought outside the box. And it happened. And it does happen. So when people say to me, I have no money. No, N-O, no money means I don't have a cent. I don't have one dollar. Yep. So let's get clear on the language. No money means I haven't got anything. You know, like I can say I've got no money. And then I can look in front of me, and I can grab all my loose change, 
And actually there's two dollars there. So it's not no money, it's two dollars. Now what can I do with two dollars? I can do something with two dollars. I can start the process with two dollars. I can engage in something. I can get out of the mindset I've got no money to I've actually got some money. So I love getting clear on language, Lisa, and this is you know, no disrespect to you because I know we're typing and no money is a common statement. What you're saying is, I currently don't have the resources to get to Australia, which is a very different language and I have no money. So just get clear because once we change that mindset, you know, we've had this conversation through the last hour about the change in the mindset. And a lot of it is about the words that come out of our mouth. Yeah. So let's change no money yeah, to what the truth is around that. Do you have two dollars in change? Do you have a hundred bucks in the bank? You know, do you have some you know I've got I've got no money, but I do have different money in different denominations from around the world because I travel a lot. <laughs> Vietnamese and um, Belarusian and American and British. So I have money. So that, yeah, it's really good just to change. Yes, that was right. Two cents. So yeah, two cents. Absolutely. So two cents is better than no money. It's a different mindset. So like, let's let's get into that. And what can you do with two cents? Well, you can rub those two cents together and create some magic. So yeah, I've been a bit flippant, but yeah, we can. We can create with the mindset. And when we have a vision, remember vision, plan, action. So get the vision first, then do the planning and then put things into action. Very happy to help you in that process. If you go to my website, adrianhanks.com, anybody listening in, you can actually get a free 30-minute session with me to ascertain where you are right now in your life to see if I'd be a good match for you to work with as a coach, mentor, psychotherapist, whatever it is you need in your life right now. So go to that website anyway, adrianhanks.com. Look at the programs, look at what I have to offer. And um, I'm going to close out here now. We're on the hour at one o'clock. And I'll see you all again, hopefully next week on the Life Mastery Show at midday next Thursday. Thank you so much for engaging. Love it, love it. Love and blessings. See you.